Okay, so um, with the base coat on the model, uh, we're ready to move on to the camouflage um, painting now. Uh, I've got the uh, Begamot decal sheet here and I've been looking through the options and um, I've decided to go with one from 2005. Uh, it's got the, it's the standard camouflage colours uh, but sea flanker patterns vary enormously. Luckily the, the one I've chosen, as you can see here, has got a full um, left, right and top uh, surface camouflage outline for us. So I can follow that. Um, there are numerous ways. Some people like to uh, brush paint their camouflages. Some people will freehand airbrush. Um, looking at the demarcation lines, they're, they're reasonably hard on the on the real aircraft. Um, they're not, there's no great amount of um, overspray. When I've got um, a scheme like that, my preferred um, method of masking is to use uh, either you know. Um, uh, blue tack or any of its um, equivalents. This is a, a pack I've got from Tesco, um, cheaper than blue tack, just just to try it out. Um, I've been using this method of masking camouflages for about 15 years now, and um, I really like the the effect it gives um, on on small scale models. So what I'm going to do is just go through the uh, how I actually set about using this to uh, mask my camouflages off. So I, I cut off a um, cut off a small piece of the uh, tack material and I'm just going to rub it in my hands a while just to warm it through a little bit okay and then what I'll do is uh, on a clean surface, in this case it's a cutting mat that I use pretty much only for this job, uh, rolling out blue tack for masks. What I do is I roll it into a very thin uh, a very thin sausage. Some people um, use much thicker sausages. There's no right or wrong way, it's what works for you. Um, what's always worked for me, or the method I've developed over the years, is to roll it out really uh, quite thin. It just makes it uh, easier to manipulate around curves. Something else to be aware of when you're doing this, um, certainly on the sea flanker camouflage, it, it's a very complicated camouflage on top. It's going to require uh, a lot of care uh, to achieve the finish you want uh, and a lot of reference to the instruction sheets. Okay, so that's probably about as thin as I uh, as I want it at the moment. So I'm going to take a piece like that, continue rolling out so it's a bit thinner. Now my plan on this, because it's going to have to be um, done this way, on, under, on a normal camouflage, if it was um, two tones, I would uh, simply mask out the areas that need to remain the base colour, spray the top colour. If it was three tones, quite often three tones are equally simple, you just mask out the areas that need to remain the colour, spray the second colour, mask out the remaining areas that need to be the second colour, then spray the third colour. Because of the way the flanker camouflage is done, um, it's going to be a bit more complicated than that in that I'm going to have to mask to do the second colour, remove all the masking, and then remask to do the third colour. Um, so it's going to be quite an involved process on this. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the uh, instruction uh, sheet for the camouflage and like I say I'm uh, masking off the area that needs to remain pale blue as you can see there. Okay, so uh, there's another piece on this tailplane that needs to remain pale blue. Uh, which is uh, near the tip there. So what we'll do is just mask that off like so. Pat it down quite firmly into place, and then what I do, um, again there are numerous methods for doing this, some people will just flatten out a piece of uh, the the, um, uh, 
the blue tack itself and, and use that to press into place. I prefer to use masking tape to uh, mask the bulk of these areas off. So I'll, I'll cut out pieces of masking tape and then it's simply a case of placing them like so. Again, like I stress, there's there's no right or wrong way of doing this. This is the way I developed it. Works for me. Um, if something else works for you, stick with it. Um, but essentially, that's what I'll be doing over the entire model prior to um, starting to spray the uh, the mid the middle blue colour. Okay, so I'll place that to one side now, and uh, let's have a look at the uh, other the uh, other tailplane now. So, like I said, cut off a piece, roll that out a bit thinner. It's really quite um, quite complicated because the third colour that I'm going to be adding later on, um, it it, uh, it 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 covers both the uh, base coat and the second coat. It's like a, a third colour altogether placed over the previous two colours. So it's it's quite a random complex scheme to achieve. Um, you'd have your work out even if you're freehand airbrushing it with no masking just to follow the uh, pattern so I'm going to do that as best I can although I have a feeling there, uh, there might be a few more than a few touch ups will be necessary okay so carefully remembering when you do masking like this it sounds stupid, but you have to remember which bit is remaining the base colour. Okay, so in this case, um, the bit to remain the base colour on this tail plane is here and here, with this bit having to be the second colour of blue. It sounds stupid to say it, but it's a mistake I've made numerous times. Uh, spend a lot of time masking and then fill in the wrong areas. And uh, basically, you've got no option then but to stop, take all the masking off, and start again, uh, which can make you a little short tempered to say the least. Um, I did have a decent, my favourite pair of tweezers around here. Yes, I know, I'm a geek, I have a favourite pair of tweezers. That's really sticky. Quite like that. There they are, there's my favourite tweezers. Um, so again, we're masking off the areas to remain pale blue.
And that is quite literally it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way over the whole model. I'll show you the model um, completely masked before I start spraying it. And um, we'll, we'll go through the actual colours I'm using. So uh, I'll, I'll see you uh, shortly, or probably in an hour or two, in actual fact, when I've finished masking this piece of the uh, camouflage off. OK? OK, so uh, here we are about 90 minutes uh, later. And um, here you can see the uh, first lot of masking has been done ready for the medium blue to go on. Um, now initially I started off by um, masking out, shall we say, I was masking off all the areas that had to remain pale blue. Uh, that rapidly got very, very complicated and I was losing my way. Um, so in actual fact what I had to do um, was change tack slightly and if this makes sense, rather than masking all the areas to remain light blue, I decided just to mask the areas that needed to be the medium blue. It sounds a bit complicated and it is, it, it, it might not really make sense to you in, in that sense, but what that means is that I've got areas on the model which are still exposed, which won't be getting any paint at all. With the previous method I was using, the uh, entire model um, would have been masked off and just the um, medium blue areas would have been uh, still visible. This um, is just, it meant I, was, I could find my way a bit easier. Now it does mean that when I come to do the darker blue, um, that's going to be the real test of, of how well I've managed to follow the pattern because if I've followed the pattern properly, the darker blue will bring the whole scheme together properly. If not, I'm going to have a lot of touching up and remasking to do and uh, going back over colours, but we'll, we'll see. Now as to the actual shade of the medium blue, uh, on the Hazigar instruction sheet, okay, um, they would have you use um, three, Mr. Colour 323 with, with uh, an additional flat base. Now that's Mr. Colour 323, which is uh, really quite a, quite a bright blue. I was um, having a look at some photographs I, um, I downloaded from the internet, um, like these, um, just to um, kind of see what the colour matches were. And it wasn't it wasn't that far off, um, but um, it was a, it was a little bit bright. I thought, um, and I was looking for a way just to uh, kind of I wanted to darken the colour down a little bit whilst keeping it very blue. Now, if I darkened it down with black or a dark grey, it would turn it immediately um, grey. So what I was looking for was um, some kind of a um, a proper a true blue darker a darker true blue to darken it down with. So what I did was I decanted some of this into um, another pot and then um, another Japanese uh, maker of lacquer colours called, um, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, I think it's Gianotis. I use a lot of their colours as well and they do a series of primary colours. This is primary colour cyan um, which is a very very um, deep clearish uh, blue colour. It's really very, very intense indeed. All these colours, they do a series of primary colours that are just used for tinting existing colours. Um, but they're really, really intense, so you only need a few drops. And literally, I um, I poured some of the uh, uh, lighter blue, the 323, into this pot. And then I added no more than two or three drops of um, the uh, tinting cyan colour. And did a test and I'm happy that that looks uh, exactly how I wanted it to look. It's, it's, it's still retained a definite blue tint uh, but is um, has darkened it down to where I want it. So what I'm going to do now is as we did with the original colour um, which is the spraying and then the lightening it up to um, weather it and then darkening down to weather it I'm going to do exactly the same with this. Okay so put the airbrush on I'm just going to uh, check what my, yeah I can already see that's going through fine, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of the uh, medium blue colour into a cup here, it's quite thick this one because it's a gloss colour, um, and add some Mr Colour Leveling Thinner, like so, and then I'm just going to check what my uh, yeah, that's really coming through very nicely already. So I'm just going to zoom you out. 
Um, so I need to keep an eye on the uh, actual camouflage colours here and the camouflage uh, instructions. Okay, um, you can probably see that's gone on there really quite blue. Um, looking at it and comparing it to the pictures, I have to say I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've um, I think I've got it really very close to the actual colour, so no real complaints there. So with that, let's um, let's proceed with uh, camouflaging. Okay, so there we go. So let's get this masking straight off and see what we've uh, see what we've got. Now the thing I'm noticing is that, um, as with a real aircraft, the RLM 65, the the pale Luftwaffe blue that I've used suddenly looks very grey against that blue of the medium blue which is quite an intense colour um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that is something that is very noticeable on the real aircraft as well if you see the underside it's definitely blue when you look at the top side um, the pale blue area actually takes on quite a grey appearance um, and that's because the other two blues are quite intense so I have to say I'm, I'm pretty happy um, overall with how that's uh, with how that's looking. So let's get all this masking off. Some people will try to reuse masking tape, uh, save bits. I always prefer just to treat it as a a, uh, a complete write-off. Um, it's just the way I prefer to work.
Okay. There you go. Right. Well, there's there's the masking off um, from the uh, from the medium blue colour. Now, I'll grant you at the moment, it's it's not looking much like a sea flanker, um, but that's that will all come together uh, when I add the um, the, the final colour, the, the the dark blue. Uh, to the camouflage scheme. Um, that will all come together and then we'll also see how good my masking was in that um, it'll, it'll uh, we'll see how accurate I was in, in these patches here because they have to uh, merge with the two other colours um, and that will only happen when I mask and spray those. But there you are there's a mid blue. Now what I'm going to do is I'll do the uh, dark blue in exactly the same method, I won't film it because there's um, it, it's just using exactly the same method, and I'll um, I'll get back to you once that colour's done, and uh, we can see the results.